Hey guys, it's uh, Patriot Gal here, and welcome to the Forging Freedom podcast. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties here with the stream help that says that it's bad. Can you guys uh, shout me out and let me know how it's coming out on your end? I would appreciate that. So I've been struggling with this thing all day, trying to get the music right. And I thought I had everything worked out, but it appears that there's some problem. So if you guys could, as you join, okay, so you're not getting any audio or video, Essential Mountain Homestead.
Okay, it's Patriot Gal with Forging Freedom Channel, and this is uh, the live podcast. And tonight we're going to be talking about ladybugs. So give me a shout out if you can hear me. Uh, we've had a few technical difficulties tonight, and it seems to have something to do with the music. So as you guys join, if you could let me know if you are hearing us okay, that would be great. And we're just going to give a few minutes for a few people to join in. Looks like we've got one person watching now. So it's been a crazy day around here. Uh, we've had a, some wild weather um, in the last couple of days, and it's starting to warm up again. It's been a cool June for northern Utah. Uh, not record-breaking by any means, but it's been we're off to a pretty cool start. and. Um, so everything's just a little bit behind um the the tomatoes uh look really good they're deep green color and growing really great hey wendy thank you for letting me know uh, it seems the problem that we were having was trying to run some music through the podcast prior to the start of the podcast so i don't know what that issue is we're gonna have to work on that see if we can't get that fixed out but um anyway so we're going to be talking about ladybugs tonight and i'm glad it's working now you guys there's all kinds of little gremlins that you have to overcome sometimes <laughs> so i'm glad you guys could be here with us tonight so ladybugs let's talk about them we're going to talk about five plants that you can grow to attract ladybugs to your homestead and this year we have had a lot of ladybugs i'm so excited I think our our plan must be working. Um, in fact, I think I noticed them just right after they, uh, not right after they hatched out, but after they morphed from their um, pupal stage to and their larva stage to the ladybug stage. And I first noticed them on one of my peppers, and I thought, God, why are all those ladybugs on the peppers? And as I looked closer, I saw that they were feeding on some either some aphids or some mites that I didn't even realize that I had and so I was excited to see them munching away so I you know most people know that ladybugs eat aphids um, but what you might not know is that one ladybug can eat up to 50 aphids per day and ladybugs will they will purposely lay their eggs in a cluster of aphids so that when the babies hatch that they'll have something to begin to start to eat so 50 aphids a day I'm I'm all for that uh, bring on the ladybugs now when I first heard about ladybugs and that they could help your your garden out I went and I I think I was at Home Depot and I bought some ladybugs a, a big package of them and it says you know turn them loose at night and when it's cool um, you know, and within, I don't know, three or four days, all the ladybugs were just gone and, and they weren't around. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's crazy. That seems like that was a waste of money. <laughs> so I, um, started doing some research on, you know, what type of habitat do ladybugs like to live in? And what I found out is that they like to live in certain kind of plants. So just to give you a little history on ladybugs they were they are not native to america they were actually brought here from asia in 1916 and they were brought here specifically to control aphids and adult ladybugs will live through the winter they don't die off in the winter uh, except maybe in the most extreme zones but they will kind of migrate to southern facing walls and boards and and bushes and things like that and they'll just kind of burrow in for the winter and um, a lot of times they'll lay their they'll lay their eggs in the spring and so they'll leave they leave hunt sorry they lay hundreds of eggs um, in the colonies of the aphids um, so but the problem is that ladybugs have predators too so there's different kinds of birds like martins and swallows and swifts and crows that will eat ladybugs. And so they need some kind of habitat to hide in. They're also eaten by dragonflies and assassin bugs and parasitic wasps and ants. 
certain kinds of ants, tree frogs. And they can also get taken down by parasites, uh, fungus, and mites. So what type of plant is it that they like to live in? They like to live in what's called an umbral type of plant. So umbral as in umbrella. So it's an umbrella type of plant that they like to live in. And so we're going to talk about five of those plants tonight that are um, easy to grow. And the first one we're going to talk about, uh, let me just show you this picture here. This is a larval stage ladybug. So you may have seen these around your garden and they look so ugly that you would probably think that maybe that's a bad bug, but that's actually a really good bug. So you don't want to kill those if you see them. And hello, everybody that's joining the podcast. Um, I will be happy to answer your questions and respond to you later, but right now I'm going to try to focus on what I've got prepared for you. So I am not ignoring you. I'm just trying to focus. All right. It looks like we've got a couple of new people. Liberty Bell, nice to see you. And Essential Mountain, they are a repeat uh, visitor. So welcome to everybody and welcome ben, uh, Wendy. And if I missed anybody, don't hold it against me. Okay, so the first plant that we're going to talk about is carrots. And I'm not talking about, you know, putting carrot seeds in the ground and growing carrots. What I'm talking about is going either in your root cellar if you have one or going to the store and just buying some, a bag of carrots and purposely look for the ones that have um, you know a little bit of green coming out the end of it and then just go in your garden take your spade dig a hole and just jam the whole carrot in there and what will happen and you'll be amazed at how fast this happens what will happen is the green will start growing and it will start growing into uh, the second year of what a carrot does which is to put on seed and it will look something like this now you can see on the left hand side you see the actual flower that comes up from a carrot and then after that flower dies back you see that it um, kinda has this cluster all these little seeds inside I don't know if you can see the individual seeds but they're they're in there and they look a lot like a dill seed so that is the first plant that you can plant and it's like super easy to to do right it's just like you can go do it tomorrow and what I would do is I would you know um, jam six or seven carrots around plants that you know the aphids like I always find them on my um, oh, my Brussels sprouts uh, cabbage broccoli uh, those type of things, all the crucifer vegetables I find them on, and uh, they always get on my peppers, and so uh, sometimes I see them on my basil. So anywhere where you have an aphid problem, you can jam some of those in the ground and have, like, just in a few weeks it'll start growing, and the ladybugs will, you know, be attracted to that. And um, so the second plant that we're going to talk about, just scroll down here, the second plant is cilantro. And one of the things that I always hear from people when they plant cilantro is they don't like to plant it because it goes, uh, it bolts so quickly when the heat comes. But this is actually good for you. And cilantro seed is um, nothing more than coriander seed. So you could probably just go to the store and buy a spice bottle of, of whole coriander and plant that. It may be cheaper than buying a package of seeds. But it puts on a massive amount of seeds, and it again is an uh, umbrella, umbrella style, style um, flower. And it looks like this. You can see off to the left there, that's what it starts to look like when it bolts, grow, grows that heavy stem. And then it kind of gets that umbrella shape to it. And this one's a little farther down the road, it actually has the seeds. Uh, you can see the green coriander there. And I love fresh coriander. Um, uh, cilantro seeds or coriander but anyway I love fresh coriander because it tastes a little bit like lime um, it's fun to put that um, in a little bit of blend it up and strain it and then put pour a little bit of lemonade through it and have it in your lemonade um, just there's lots of different things that could use a little bit of lime taste you can put it on fish and um, so that's another really good one and I just want to check with you guys uh, pause right here and check and make sure the 
stream is still doing well. It says that it is. Just give me a thumbs up or a shout out and let me know how the sound is. Also let me know how my volume is. And I'm just going to refresh my page here just in case I'm missing anything. Give me one second. Yeah, the internet is just like super slow. Okay. All right, guys, it says it's good, so I'm just going to go forward. All right, so that's the second plant is um, coriander or, or uh, cilantro. All right, so on to number three. The third plant, and you probably guessed this, is dill. It has a nice umbrella-shaped um, flower when it grows, and it's just you can just never have enough dill, right? I mean, I, I use it so many things. I use it on fish and uh, making pickles and, and different things like that, making sauerkraut. I like to put a little bit in my sauerkraut when I make that. And so dill, if you if you find a good spot to plant your dill and you let a little bit of it go to seed every year, you should have dill, you know, pretty much forever. Um, it's one of my favorite, favorite herbs. Okay, hearing good, seeing good. Thank you. Music well, I appreciate that. All right, and um, the fourth one is a plant that I have not grown, but I've seen it other places, and it sounds delightful, and it's beautiful. It's called status or status, or it's also called sea lavender. Isn't that a beautiful plant? But That's one of the top plants, apparently, that ladybugs like, and I'm looking forward to getting some of this and giving that a try. Have any of you guys tried that have you have you grown or know anybody that has grown sea lavender that is just a beautiful plant um, let me know if you know anybody that's that's planted that before okay um so let we're, we're going to move along here to the next one and this is one of my favorite plants it's got so many uses and the fifth plant is yarrow now this is a yellow yarrow i have white yarrow that grows in my area and it grows wild out in my field and what I've done is it's very easy to propagate in fact if you propagate it somewhere put it somewhere that you make sure you want it there <laughs> because it has a tendency to spread when I first learned about these plants I was so excited about them I thought well I've got yarrow I can just go out and get some yarrow root and I'll replant it in my garden beds and um, I wouldn't say it was a horrible mistake, but um, it was definitely a mistake because the the yarrow has these little runners uh, and it spreads, you know, by um, root. Um, it has these I don't, can't remember what they're called, but they just run underneath the dirt and then the plants just pop up. And so, um, but you can put it in a pot and it just it's almost indestructible. It's a very like deserty kind of plant. It it does well on places where there's not a lot of water so it, it's a good plant to put in a pot and you can just put the pots around your garden and so that is yarrow now let me tell you about we're going to give you I've we've gone through five but I'm going to give you a bonus plant so this plant you're probably all familiar with and it's elderflower you see over there to the right you can see the elderflower and then in the middle, you can see a stem with aphids, black aphids, all over it. So it probably won't be long before something comes along and the ladybugs um, live in that flower and start to devour the aphids. So there you go. There's five plants, actually six, that you can grow. And these plants have other beneficial uses. And I love it when you can... Um, you know plant a plant and it has multiple uses I love cilantro myself I know a lot of people don't but you might like the coriander and uh, I love elderberry we like to take elderberries and we make a syrup out of them that we put on pancakes and sometimes when we have a cold we'll just take a big old tablespoon of elderberry syrup it helps with um, oh, it helps you 
Well, it just helps you get better. It helps you with your resistance, and it's um, an antiviral and an antibacterial. And yarrow uh, is a good plant to have around. It's um, known to stop bleeding. I've used it before when I've cut myself. I've um, jammed some dried yarrow in and um, put a band-aid around it, and it seems to stop the bleeding for me. And when I say these things, I'm just going to tell you about things that work for me. I'm not telling you to go do these things. So, um, and then, you know, the, um, the dill, of course, is useful. And... And the carrots, you know, if you, ideally, if you could take carrots and take a carrot that you have grown the previous year, keep it in your crisper drawer, or keep several of them in your crisper drawer, not only will you create the habitat for the ladybug, but you can save those seeds. If you're growing an heirloom variety or a open pollinated variety, um, you can save those seeds and replant, you know, your carrots and have a steady supply. So there are five plants that um, attract ladybugs, and I hope you guys found that useful. So now um, we are just going to answer some questions and chat about whatever you guys want to for the rest of the hour. And again, I appreciate you guys joining in the Forging Freedom podcast. And let's see who we've got in here. Okay, so Liberty Bell, I don't think that you have joined our podcast before. Tell us where you're from and a little bit about yourself as much as you feel like you want to share. I'm just going to refresh my screen really good here and see if there are any new messages on the chat. I can get the computer to work here. We're having gremlins today, folks. Absolute gremlins. Give me one second. Yeah, the last message I have is uh, from Music Well that says we're hearing good and seeing good. So I don't know if the, the chat is working or if you guys just aren't commenting on anything. Um, but anyway... We will try to find some other things to talk about here. You know, the husband and I were at the movie the other evening, and when we came out of the movie, it was just starting to get dark, and there were some lights on in the parking lot. And I noticed this bird. Um, that it was like almost completely yellow with gray wings, and I was watching this thing catch bugs. I guess the lights were attracting the bugs. This was an amazing bird, and I think it was a marten. I've seen them up here at my property before, but I'll tell you what, those are bug-catching bug catching birds. I am going to look into what type of habitat it would take to get those birds to be attracted to my homestead as well, because they were fantastic. And I'm going to tell you guys a crazy story. So, talking about birds, um, I think this is what happened. So, I had... Uh, two weeks ago, I had four, well, let's see, I had six of my does, uh, rabbits that were were bred, and they were due that weekend, and almost all of them had babies except for one I apparently didn't take, but the uh, other four successfully had their litters, but the one had a litter of, I think she had 12, but unfortunately, she did not have them in the nesting box for whatever reason she had them outside the nesting box and by the time I got out there in the morning it was pretty chilly like I say we've been having a, a cold cold summer so far and um, or, or cool I would say and so all of the babies unfortunately were were passed away and so I gathered up all these babies uh, these dead babies and I put them in a box and I put them over by my compost pile thinking that I would bury them um, later and I got distracted and I uh, remembered later in the day and I went back there and they were all gone and I just am like where did they go 
And what I think happened was, is there are some magpies that are nesting near this compost pile. And I think they hauled them all off and fed them to their babies. So I guess that's okay. I mean, you know, they went back to nature somehow. They were, they were dead, so they didn't suffer. But that was just like the weirdest thing. It was like, I felt like I'd offered up the baby rabbits to the sky god or something. <laughs> it was really weird. But anyway, I am still not seeing any um, chats from you guys. Um, somebody give me a shout out if you're still hearing me. And let me know what you guys might want to talk about tonight. How are your gardens doing? And have you had any aphid problems yet this year? I'll tell you, I'm having the best year I've had so far at trying to grow my Brussels sprouts. I've been trying to grow them for several years now, and they are just doing fantastically. So... I am excited about that. And if you guys um, happen to be around this next week, I'm not sure what day we're going to do it, but we've started a Wisdom of Our Ancestors series where we're reading stories from um, pioneers and homesteaders of the past. And we're reading those out loud, and they've been pretty fascinating. Excuse me, fascinating. So I'd love to have you guys around for that. We'll try to let you know when that's going to be. And it looks like we're about uh, about 33 minutes here. Um, I'm hoping that you guys can hear me. Liberty Bell just gave me a smile. So I hope that means that you guys are able to hear me okay. So, okay. Well, let me know what you guys want to talk about. So, I am just drawing a blank here. So, you guys, um, I really need some something to talk about. All right, so one exciting thing that I've got going this year is I've planted my um, pickling cucumbers. I got them in the ground the other day. And you, for some of you guys, you might think, wow, that's really late to plant cucumbers. But we live in zone five here. And the last average frost date for us is June 8th. And it it actually got, it didn't get down to freezing, but it actually was pretty cold the last couple of days. So but the rain was really great for, it just seems like the rain just makes everything pop out, right? So um, it got really humid today after the rain. And I went out there and my pickling cucumbers have popped out of the ground. So I'm super excited about that. And I use some stuff, it's called tea tape. It's made by a company called Dripworks. So in my 4x8 beds, I use this drip tape. And so it's a 4x8 a bed. So each, there's, you know... Um, four times eight, that's 16. There's 16 square, excuse me. Yeah, four times eight. So 16, 32, there we go. 32 squares in each box. And um, the each row has a piece of drip tape that runs down it. So there are four, four rows with, you know, four pieces of drip tape. And in the past, I have just, zone five, Nova Scotia. Okay. Hey, that's awesome, Wendy. We'll have to we'll have to share notes. You know what I've got that's pretty fascinating is my my husband's um, great grandfather left a journal, and he was he was probably one of the first cabins that was ever built. This is back in about 1848, 1849. He was um, one of the first cabins that was built up in Cache County, which is um, county right next to mine and it's about the same elevation and um, he never wrote a lot every day but he did did try to write something every day and so you know you'd be going along and he'd say uh, planted peas or planted onions or did this or did that and it's basically just like a like an almanac of planting that's been super valuable for us um, this year I planted potatoes and I made a 
a pretty good mistake with the potatoes. We, we were going to get the frost. We knew we were going to get it. So I put some windows, window panes that I had saved over the boxes that fit, you know, pretty good. I threw down some tube of pores to uh, take up the extra space and then to use some for bracing. And then I put the windows over that. And it worked great for uh, keeping them from getting frozen. But um, it got kind of warm after that. And I forgot to take those windows off and then I put some fresh rabbit manure under the potatoes and around them and left those windows on and I went out about an hour later and they where I had, I had put the manure they were absolutely fried and I thought oh I've ruined them so I pulled the windows off but you know what they didn't they didn't die it knocked them back a little bit but within about a week they came back um, stronger than ever and now if you were to go out there and look at that potato box you can't even tell that, uh, that that there was a problem. Everything looks just super. Everything is just rolling along really great. The garlic, I swear, is about, um, well, you know, it's in a box and it's raised a little bit, maybe about six inches, but seriously, it's up to my chest. And I've been harvesting the uh, garlic scapes, um, and I, I really didn't know exactly what to do with those, but I had some inspiration last night. What we did is I peeled them, put them in the blender with a little bit of water, and I just blended that up. And then I took um, about a stick of butter, softened, put that in the blender, and blended the garlic scapes and the uh, butter together. And so we had garlic butter, and we spread that on some French bread and had it with our lasagna last night, and we toasted the toasted the French bread in the oven with the garlic butter on it. And you know what? I think I've stumbled onto something. It was fantastic. So I'm going to be making some more of the um, garlic scape butter. And I'm just going to freeze it. Um, and that way we can enjoy it all year. I'm going to use some small containers and, and just freeze it. So that's what we've been. That's one of the first things we've been harvesting. I got my netting over my strawberries today and I've been growing the all-star strawberries and they've been really great um, it's just starting to pick a few strawberries now but it looks like we're gonna have a great harvest of strawberries and so we're looking forward to that in fact we just ate the last of the strawberries from last year just a couple of days ago in in some smoothies I think we we ended up with about um, out of two four by eight boxes. I think we ended up with about uh, four gallon size Ziplocs in the freezer of strawberries. So, all right. So let's see. So Wendy, remind me where you're from. Oh yeah. You just said you're from Nova Scotia. That is great. Tell us a little bit about Nova Scotia. What's the weather like there right now? And let's see, Liberty Bell, where are you from? I've got all sorts here. Great to see you again. Essential Mountain Homesteading. He's got an awesome channel. This is a guy that knows how to use power tools. And he is on an adventure with his family in the... Um, high altitudes of Idaho somewhere and they are building a tiny house to live in and um, well they build their their main homestead so it's a fascinating channel to follow who else here has channels that they would like to talk about I know I'm always trying to find folks to subscribe to my channel and this is a good chance for you to promote your channel right now so it's very cool and rainy so you probably grow great lettuce there Wendy right it's probably a great place to grow lettuce I did not get my lettuce in the ground this year I don't know why I had plenty of time but it just seemed like there was so much going on the weather was so crazy I just never got out there to do it but anyway I am looking at having I, I've actually got this weekend 23 rabbits that are ready to harvest 
and I don't know if I'm going to get to it this weekend. My daughter just bought a new house, and um, she is really excited about it. It's a it's a, a pre-existing house, um, but new to her, and they've just ripped the carpet out, and they're trying to refinish the wooden floors, the hardwood floors, and get the painting done before they move all their furniture in. So I'm probably going to be helping her with that this weekend. But um, I'll probably have to get to those rabbits next week sometime. And I'm thinking about having a class to teach some of the people in my local area how to harvest uh, the rabbits and how to butcher them and how to cook them. We'll probably make it a three-part class. So that's one thing that we're going to be putting together this week. And so... Let me ask you guys, is there a better time that you would like to see this podcast? We are trying to um, coordinate with the Homestead Network. Now, I don't know if you guys follow the Homestead Network or not. Let me just uh, give you their website real quick here. Yeah, it's thehomesteadnetwork.com. Uh, it's a website put together by Brad and Krista that run the Big Family Homestead. And you can go there, and they've got a collection of people that are in the homesteading realm. And it has showtimes there where you can look at a schedule. And so we are trying to fit our podcast uh, in these slots where they don't already have someone scheduled. We are not affiliated with them in any way, uh, although we'd love to be picked up by them. But um, we are trying to not you know, support them by not conflicting with the things that they have already scheduled. And that's why we are at this time right now. And I don't know if I got it wrong or not, but I think there was supposed to be, uh, I think Dirt Patch Heaven was supposed to be on at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time, which would be 4 p.m. here. And I didn't, I didn't see that happen. So there might've been something happened with her today. Uh, there's a, also supposed to be a episode with um, Brad tonight uh, doing a tech talk and that's at 8 p.m. Eastern time so that would be 6 p.m. our time out here in the Mountain West I don't know if that's gonna happen or not maybe he's come on and said that uh, they won't be doing that um, because I know he's in the middle of trying to pack up and and move so hey Pacific Permaculture Glad to see you here. And yeah, your time varies by the day. Yeah, and it's always, you know, the podcasts are always here. You know, they always get automatically recorded and posted. So, um, you know, you guys will be able to see our channel. And, and I promise you that we'll get better at this. Uh, this is like, I think, the second or third one that I've ever done live. And so it's a lot, it's a lot different than... Um, you know, talking on a video where you can edit out all your boo-boos. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. The music, well, after dark, probably the best for all homesteading types. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably true. I, you know, I know, um, you know, right now, let's see, it's uh, just about 6 o'clock here. So that would make it 8 o'clock on the East Coast. And it probably doesn't get dark until 9. So, you know, maybe an hour from now would have been a better time. But it looks like they have somebody in that time slot and so like I say we're trying to not conflict um, with them but anyway we'll we'll keep playing around with it and um, yeah that's a good idea Pacific um, kind of do my own thing <laughs> I'm glad that we sound awesome that's great that's great yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not worried about being a threat. I just um, definitely want to promote those guys. They've been so helpful to me, uh, so supportive and helpful to me in answering questions and different things like that. And so I definitely want to give credit where credit's due. I've been inspired by uh, several people. I would say the first person that made me ever think of doing a podcast and we will be doing an actual podcast and we, I mean we call this a podcast here on um, YouTube but it's not actually uh, a podcast it uh, per se you know a podcast is typically where you have a podcatcher on your mobile device or on your computer 
and uh, with an RSS feed and it uh, just you know whenever we post an episode it would download and it's it's not live but I kind of almost like this uh, live aspect of the um, YouTube better than a podcast because I can interact with you guys so we will we will be developing an actual podcast sometime in the future because one thing that I know is I listen to a lot of podcasts while I'm outside working because I don't have to sit in front of a computer and watch anything I can just turn and listen you know to something I'm interested in when um, you know when I can do other things you know I can be multitasking and um, it's telling me that the stream health has having some issues so I hope you guys can still hear me it's probably because I opened up that other window to look at the homestead network page but um, anyway yeah I I like to listen to YouTube videos um, problem that I have is when I get out into the garden I get away from my Wi-Fi far enough that sometimes the video won't play and um, you know and then or then you know it's easy to hit something while it's in my pocket where it goes full screen and then my battery runs dead really fast so um, it'd be nice if if YouTube would add some feature where you could just disable the video part of something and just have the audio portion that would be a really, really good thing to add if you are listening YouTube. So, um, so Pacific Permaculture, I know he's out in California. And the Music Well, where are you from, Music Well? All right, guys. So I tried to start this thing at 5 o'clock, but with all the technical issues, we got started about 15 minutes late. And um, yeah, I'm just having problems with the music. Like when when I'm listening, uh, I, I play the music um, on a, it's not iTunes, it's actually Amazon Music, but it's, you know, in the memory of the phone. It's not using Wi-Fi or anything to play the music. And um, it sounds perfect in my headphones. But then um, when I listen to the recording of the live stream later, the uh, music is kind of, I don't know, it sounds tinny. It doesn't sound full bodied. I don't know what the problem is. I know it's fine coming into the mixer because it sounds perfect. I know it's fine going out of the mixer. So it's something to do with the stream itself um, that's causing the problem with the music. And then tonight when I tried to play the music, it seemed to just like, overwhelm the system completely to where it didn't want to stream at all and so that's a little frustrating frustrating I'll try to work that out because I definitely want to have music for you guys to listen to when you first get here as you know people come on board so um, okay so you know one one thing I have not seen in my garden too much this year is the white cabbage moths I haven't I saw them at the first part of the year then we got that cold snap and I think it might have knocked a lot of them out I can't say I'm like super sorry about that because I hate those suckers they're um, they are like hard to battle sometimes um, it figures when I finally get my row cover up right over my Brussels sprouts that we'd have a year with no cabbage moths but um, I'm sure they'll show up sooner or later <laughs> Yeah, Wendy, aren't they just the devil? I hate them. Um, I'll go out sometimes. I They really got on my kale bad one year. And I think one of the things that I'm trying to do, let's see, Music Well says, being compressed too much to sound good probably when you run the music on a high bit rate, it taxes the stream. Okay, yeah, that makes sense to me. And I thought maybe that was it, so I did some experimenting today, lowering the bit rate. But um, then it sounded like like really bad. It sounded like really slow and really bad. But maybe there's, I'll just keep playing around with it. I'm glad that you told me that, the music. Well, at least that lets me know that I'm on the right track and I can keep playing away with it. Um, 
and probably get that figured out sooner or later. But um, one thing I'm known for is my tenacity, so I will not give up. <laughs> oh, yeah. So anyway, um, you know, let me just talk about something that I've been meaning to make a video about. Claire over at uh, the Big Family Homestead, she also has uh, a, her own channel, Living Like Claire. She actually tagged us a while back wanting us to do a video on who would die first, preppers or homesteaders. <laughs> and I thought that that was just um, uh, funny. But, um, you know, I've kind of been in both realms. When I first started this channel, it was called Patriot Gal Prepper. And I am a prepper. I'm not one of those crazy, like, wear a gas mask preppers. But um, I've always, I've been raised and I've always lived a prepared lifestyle. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not waiting for like doomsday or, uh, you know, a coronal mass ejection, <laughs> mass, mass, I think it's called a coronal mass ejection or something like that, a CME. I'm not waiting for a uh, EMP, although I do think that, you know, um, some enemy of the United States could use one of those against us fairly easily, if not an EMP, but simply a software download into our, um, you know, our our grid system that is run by computers now. And if you if you don't think that's a possibility, you might want to read a book by Ted Koppel called Lights Out. Um, <laughs> no Sherman tank in my backyard, but I did consider uh, I did consider building a a, a bunker at one time. Um, you know, I thought that things were heating up again with the Russians. I'm not too worried about it now, but it uh, uh, seemed like the last administration, um, and I'm, I'm not going to get political, but it seemed like they were really poking the Russians, and um, things were heating up pretty good. Um, some of my friends that are in the know uh, militarily um, were saying that, you know, the alerts they were seeing were the highest we had been since probably the uh, 70s or 80s and so also known as a root cellar yeah that's exactly what I was going to do for Pacific um, make that a um, make it a root cellar and just use it for that um, yeah yeah I agree music well um, so but the thing is if you look back through history it's just a good idea to be prepared I mean things happen we, it's we're an anomaly. The United States is an anomaly that we have never really fought a foreign enemy on our soil, except for you know during the Revolutionary War. And uh, which, by the way, I'm just going to tell you an interesting side note. So, in the business that I run during the winter, I have an opportunity to um, spend time with people from all over the world. And um, we had a guy here from from the UK and uh, I was talking about the Revolutionary War and he he just kept having this puzzled look on his face and finally he goes she, he goes do you mean um, what did he call it he says do you mean the uh, war for independence and I'm like yeah no we call it the Revolutionary War <laughs> but apparently over there they've rebranded it to be the war of independence <laughs> I just thought that was funny because, um, yeah, I just thought it was funny. And um, it's just the way I was raised. I was always I was always told it was the Revolutionary War. <laughs> hey, Suburban Hillbilly. First time here, new sub. Hey, thank you. Yeah, I thought it was funny. It's like re a little rewriting of history from, from their point of view. <laughs> yeah, that cracked me up. So anyway, but, um, you know, we're, we're an anomaly in that we've never really had to fight a foreign enemy here. And if you read some of the histories, you know, I, I just, I'm of the opinion that wars are always going to be here. Um, you know, I, I think until the end of time, probably wars are going to be here. And so I think it's just a good idea. It, it wasn't that long ago that our grandparents, and great grandparents lived a prepared lifestyle, and I don't even think they called it that. And so, when you ask the question, "Who's going to die first, homesteaders or preppers?" You know, I really think there's just a lot of crossover. I think I know a lot of preppers that are homesteaders, and I know a lot of homesteaders that are preppers. You know, and so I think it's just like um, 
it's kind of like politics. You know, you've got the extreme left, you've got the extreme right, and then you've got the rest of us that are just somewhat in the middle, you know, that just that just want to be left alone and just want to have a, a good life and have good opportunities to, um, you know, pursue our dreams and raise our families and, and things like that. Um, so let's see. I do drive on the wrong side of the road, so there you go. Yeah, and they've got that, and they got that that metric system, right? <laughs> I am not complying with the metric system. I don't care what they do. I like my my cups and my pounds and my ounces. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I think so. Um, you know, Pacific. I know that everybody would fight, but um, what I what I'm really thinking about is, you know, when you read these war stories, yeah, there's the, the, the people that's doing the fighting, but the people that really suffer is the civilian population. And uh, I'm probably going to do um, a whole series on, you know, like a two or three part series on uh, preparing for war. And, um, you know, it's just been on my mind uh, as of late. And I know, you know, if you're, if you're a Donald Trump fan um, and, and he won. And if you were worried about the way things are going, you might have taken your foot off the accelerator pedal just a little bit. But um, I, I think that's unwise. Uh, not that I think that he's purposely going to try to get us into any conflict. I just think conflict is there, and it's going to come here sooner or later. Or and if, even if it doesn't come here, I, I think I told you guys uh, before that I've got these war letters from my grandparents, and that. You know, in these war letters, you know, my grandma talks about the rationing that was going on at the time. And so even in, even the civilian population that's not right in the war zone gets affected um, by things. And um, so, you know, I just think it's a it's I think it's just wise. I just think it's prudent whether we have a war or we don't. You know, it's it's not, you know, sometimes you hear these people preparing for these big things that are going to happen, but sometimes it's just the little things, right? Sometimes somebody loses a job and can't find one for six months or a year, or sometimes somebody gets disabled and can't work. And, um, you know, the whole mission of the Forging Freedom podcast is to help you build, build personal liberty one day at a time. And... Um, you know, I just, I want to help people build a resilient life, a resilient homestead. I want them to help them build their homestead such that you can absorb some of these shocks that come into our lives. And, um, you know, I, I find myself focusing on gardening a lot because I truly love gardening, but I don't want this podcast to be and this channel to be completely about that. I, I would like it to be about other things too. And sometimes I tend to little get a little unbalanced on that. But um, I just think it's a good idea to be prepared, you know. Um, it's more likely that your house is going to catch fire and that you're going to lose your personal belongings or that your, a tornado is going to hit you or that a flood's going to happen than it is for, um, you know, war to break out or a... EMP or something like that and I f I just think if we prepare for the small things um, and are resilient to be able to withstand those that will help us get closer to withstanding the big things and um, yeah let's see or if they turn 50 and can't get a job yeah and that's the other thing I want to talk about here is how you can grow your own business you know how you can start your own business. I mean, we're, we're moving into a time where, um, you know, the economics are changing. I've been reading some reports that retail is looking to, you know, your, your brick and mortar stores are, uh, and this come from, from Bloomberg. And they said that they think that within the next five years, there's going to be a 25%, um, 25% of the retail stores that you know of today won't be in existence. And there was a guy that, um, he was kind of an expert in that field, and uh, he was in, a, in real estate. He says he thinks it's higher than that, and it'll happen quicker than that. And so 
But the great news is that we're in the internet age and you can build a business easier than you can ever before. And so we're going to be talking about some of those things too. So let's see here. I'm going to catch up on your... Yeah, even if you can't grow at all, you can certainly subsidize. And I don't think that our grandparents, um, our ancestors, you know, grew at all. I mean, they grew what they could and they traded for different things. And so... Um, even if you're growing something, let's see, pick two and a half gallons buckets of green beans today. That is awesome. Way to go, Music Well. That's great. Yeah, some are underemployed and can't get a supplement job being 50. Yeah, I hear you. You know, there's a lot of weird stuff going in. You're going to grill burgers for dinner? Ooh, that sounds delicious. I wish your maters were ripening. Hey, I got impatient last year and had fried green tomatoes for the first time in my life and let me tell you I'm a fan of those you saw 12 I think you meant a 12 ounce package of bacon for 9.49 no way I'll pay that ever yeah I've been seeing I've been seeing um meat prices I would say for the last 5 6 years they've been ridiculous um in fact I remember exactly when it happened. I remember that they were having that drought in California and they weren't able to feed their cows and so they were shipping a lot of cows to Texas um, to try to get them fed there and um, we our cow uh, beef herd was the lowest it had been since the 50s and I really just don't think it's come back. I just don't think it's come back. They're, you know, A lot of places probably went out of business and so Anytime that you've got uh, a small supply, you're going to get high demand and prices are going to go up. So, yeah, and isn't that just irritating? Because you know they're trying to trick you on that bacon, right? 12 ounces. Like, who's heard of 12 ounces of bacon? It's always been a pound of bacon, you know, all my life. 16 ounces in a pound, a pound of bacon. And so you just immediately think when you grab that the, that package that it's a pound of bacon. And they, I've seen them repackage all kinds of things like that um you know like ritz crackers i noticed it on ritz crackers and tuna fish when i was a kid a can of tuna like my mom could make a can of tuna with some uh, mayonnaise for tuna fish sandwiches and like one can of tuna would th feed three or four of us a sandwich each and now you know it's just a tiny amount in in that uh, tuna can um the size of the can it would be interesting if you had um, the cans from 25 years ago and you could set them side by side you know and watch the progression of the smaller and smaller and smaller cans so yeah you really got to be on your toes when you shop these days because it's just like everything is just really really deceptive and uh, you know I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people don't notice but I notice and I, a lot of people I know notice um, so yeah it irritates me to Pacific I, I just, you know, I just think like everybody's just, I get the feeling that just, um, there's just so many people, there's a lot of nice people out there. I know there are because I meet them on YouTube and, and interact with them, but, um, you know, there's just a lot of corporate interests and I'm, I'm a, I'm a totally, you know, I'm totally down for the free market system. Um, you know, I'm an entrepreneur myself and I'm totally down for it, but, um, there just really are some um, deceptive practices out there. You've just got to, you know, really watch out for yourself these days. So anyway, well, guys, we've gone about an hour now. I appreciate you stopping in. If you missed the first part about the uh, ladybugs and what plants you can plant to um, attract ladybugs in your garden, go back and watch the first part of this. And um, it's been yeah, dog food and cat food. Yeah, it, it totally has. They downsize the product, but not the price. Yeah, tricky, right? I mean, it's what I like is when they do both. <laughs> they raise the price and downsize the package. I remember candy bars. You know, I remember when you used to get like a, say, a Snickers bar or a Three Musketeers, like a regular candy bar. It was double the size of what they are now, and it was 50 cents. You know, it's just, it's crazy. I think the, the biggest ripoff out there is cold cereal. I mean, uh, just, you know, 
if you broke that down what you're paying per ounce it's just it's so stupid so ridiculous i i hardly eat any cold cereal anymore i really simplified my breakfast i i have one day at cold cereal i eat that kashi um whole grain stuff and then one day i'll have eggs and then the next day i'll have some kind of smoothie preferably with berries from the garden but i am really trying to plant a lot more um yeah, chips. Chips are another big ripoff. Although I think I've probably written chips out of my life. Chips and french fries out of my life. Um, I always knew they were bad for me, but I saw some article the other day that says that if you eat more, eat chips uh, and french fries more than twice a week, you you double your rate. You're you're fifty percent more likely to die from heart disease. So I um. Yeah, I'm probably going to be doing without those. I'd much rather have some uh, red new potatoes out of my garden, roasted in olive oil, you know, with a little bit of uh, oh, rosemary on top, than I would a bunch of potato chips or fries anyway. So I'm not saying I've always eaten like that, but yeah, bottled water. If it says purified water, it can come from just about anywhere. So yeah, I don't do the the bottled water. I do have cases of bottled water stored um, just for emergency, but as a general rule, I don't. I, what I do have is a Berkey filter. <laughs> just don't switch to candy bars. <laughs> no, I don't do too much of that either. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite things to eat is just a bowl of berries with um, and one thing I do splurge on is milk. I buy the Horizon Organic whole milk and somebody can tell me that it's not better for me but I'm telling you I it tastes like the milk that I had when I was a kid when we used to get whole milk from the actual dairy it it tastes just like that to me and I'm I'm not changing on my milk I mean it's five bucks for a half gallon but I've saved so much money other places that I can afford to to spend that um, so yeah I I do splurge on the milk because I, I don't drink milk every day, but when I have milk, I want it to be good milk. Hey, Suburban, I've got an idea for you. So um, a Berkey, I was going to make a video on this. So the Berkeys are quite expensive. I know I bought one. I bought the uh, Berkey Light, which is the plastic one. And um, But what I was, after looking at this thing, I'm going, you know, all this is is two tanks with some holes drilled in the bottom of the top tank. And a spigot on the bottom tank, and then you just screw the filters into the holes. And I think a person could just buy those Berkey filters and um, drill two holes in the bottom of a clean food grade bucket, attach the filters, and then take another bucket and um, snap the lid on, and then um, like an inch or two inches out from the, the rim of the lid in towards the center of the bucket drill a pilot hole and take a jigsaw and just cut yourself out a hole so that it's uh, pretty well open but it's got a, a lip on there the, to where you could set the other five gallon bucket on top of it and then just drill and tap a, a spigot into the bottom of it and you've got yourself the same thing as a Berkey light um, the only difference is the uh, fillers oh so Boss Swamp made one yeah yeah you could you could do the same thing you could use the plastic water bottle. There's a million different ways you could do it. So I think if I would have known that, I would have just bought the filters and made my own. In fact, I may still do it because the capacity on this Berkey light, you know, we go through it pretty quickly. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to do that. Uh, let's see. People buy 2% milk thinking it's healthy. Yeah, it's 2% milk is just, it's like water. It tastes like water to me. I got one at half price and the other two was buy one get one free deal. Let's see. Oh, cuz you've got three large Berkeys. Okay, I had to scroll back to see what what you were talking about. Yeah, I love the product. It's not that I don't think it's worth it. It's just that if you're on a budget, um, you know, that's one workaround that you could do to get around it, but I love the product. And um, yeah, I'll make a vid. I'll make one. Make a vid. 
I, I need to order some new filters anyway, so um, maybe that'll help you, Suburban, and uh, get you down the road a little bit faster. Um, so, yeah, go check out. I haven't watched it, but go ch check out Boss of the Swamps um, 1 and, and Google the videos on it, and I'm sure there's something out there um, that will show you how to do it. But I built a... Um, um, a honey strainer the same way that's kind of what gave me the idea so I took uh, one bucket and I drilled some I want to say half inch holes in the bottom of the bucket and then um, I put a paint strainer a five gallon paint strainer in the bucket and um, then I took another bucket with the lid snapped on and cut it out with the ring like I told you so the top bucket sits on the bottom bucket and then I put a honey gate in the bottom of the bucket and um, so I just poured you know crush the uh, comb and the honey and put it through the paint strainer top in that first bucket and it drips down to the second bucket and then I can just set that whole thing up on the counter and fill up my quart jars with honey that way so uh, that worked really good because I, I didn't um, have a, I w had top bar beehives and so you take the whole comb. I didn't have like a honey spinner and it's really hard to spin top bar beehives that way anyway. So yeah, buy, buy filters anytime they're on sale, Music Well says. Where where do you buy the filters and where do you find the sales, Music Well? That would be really handy to know. Yeah, and it's a good habit to get into, Pacific, um, trying to conserve cash. Um, you know, it's, I I really have a hard time parting with my cash these days. Unless it's something to um, make us more self-reliant, make us more resilient, and is going to save us money in the long run. Um, I'll give you, for instance, I just finished up a video today, and I've got to edit it, but um, you guys will get the, like, the, the first uh, glimpse of what this video is going to be but I um, have these rabbits and of course rabbits make a lot of rabbit poo and I love it because I use it in my garden it makes everything just grow so fantastically but um, I had this kind of hodgepodge of uh, containers to catch the rabbit poo especially under the grow out cages and uh, I found that I got the idea from uh, Jack Spirico who I was going to tell you before is who inspired me to start a podcast was uh, listening to Jack Spirico. Now, if you guys haven't checked out his podcast, I mean, you need to do it. Um, it, it you will learn so much from his podcast. He's done, he's been doing a podcast, I think, for um, eight years now, seven, eight years, and he does it daily, and he, he does a fantastic job. Um, one day, I hope I can grow up and be like Jack. <laughs> but anyway. Um, Oh, shoot, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, the uh, containers. So he uses these plastic uh, uh, cement mixing trays that you get from Home Depot. And they've got, I figure they got to be tough because you, you mix mortar in them, like with a shovel or with a hoe. And so they've got to be pretty sturdy. So I bought um, several of those to put underneath my rabbits. And I think it's going to make all the difference in the world because they're all uniform size and I drilled holes in the bottom of them so the rabbit urine will drain out but I think I'm going to be able to manage my rabbit manure much more efficiently now so you guys will see the video on that coming out pretty soon and so let's see uh, Music Well says it depends lots of places sell them I have folks that we keep each other informed when we run across the deal well that's awesome I'll have to I've only ever bought them on the, we're talking about the Berkey water filters now, I've only ever bought them on Amazon, um, so I, you know, I don't know where else to look exactly. Alexa Pure Filters, like them better than the Berkey. Get them through Infowars, Patriot Supply, and a couple other places. Okay, good to know, good to know. Yeah, I, I have a well, um, so, but our water started to be kind of um, at certain parts of the year, like uh, in August when things get pretty dry and hot around here, we started noticing a lot more iron in our water and um, started wondering if, you know, there was something not so good in the drinking water. I didn't have it tested, but, um, you know, I um, just didn't like the look of it. And so the other thing I 
might tell you guys is it used to clog up my um, my front loading washer you know these high energy efficient washers that are supposed to be so fantastic that cost four times as much as uh, what a regular washing machine used to cost and they don't clean your clothes worth crap they are garbage so if you're thinking about getting rid of your old washing machine and getting one of these new fangled things don't do it just keep fixing your old one because they do not get your clothes clean but it has this little screen where the water goes in and the minerals kept clogging up that screen and uh, kept shutting my washer down it was happening about every I don't know eight or nine loads and um, so I tried to think what I could do and then I remembered that I have a, a filter that's out on my drip system that you can buy at Home Depot it's just like a it's got an inlet and an outlet and that's got a canister that you screw off and it's got a mesh screen filter inside and so I put one of those on my water supply and I haven't had a problem haven't had a problem since so I solved that problem but I still hate the washer uh, I wish I could go back and just fix the one I had um, I didn't know they were so crappy but let's see yeah I've been thinking about um, maybe I saw a guy he screens out his rabbit manure and sells it for five dollars a bag he puts it right back in the bag that the feed came from so I might do some test marketing around my area see if anybody's willing to pay for it Let's see, there's an app called Honey that will track that for you and alert you with a browser notification. Oh, well, isn't that good to know? Yeah, the suburban hillbilly, he hates the front, he or she, I'm not sort of sure if you're a girl or a guy, so sorry. Uh, but anyway, uh, hates the front loader too. Yeah, I was so excited because the front loaders they used to have in the um, laundromats were fantastic I mean they would always you know, like if you needed your sleeping bag cleaned or whatever you could take it there and they were they would work great but um, these are just garbage I had to kind of hack mine to even get more water to come into it and um, using rainwater for washing clothes Pacific or for drinking yeah I I had read that the there was some kind of EPA directive over the last 10 years that said that all you know appliances had to be water and energy saving of sorts and so you know I think basically what they did is a lot of marketing to make us think we were getting something awesome um, but uh, what we got is something with a lot of bells and whistles that doesn't work worth a darn so yeah washing um, yeah I could I could do that uh, instead of using the well water um the um the screen seems to be working okay um i would have to do a lot of retrofitting to use my rainwater for that and you know maybe i will someday i have the ability to do that i do collect rainwater um i'd like to get a little better at that i'd like to ultimately be collecting rainwater off of every hard surface on my property um, I think that would just be a wise thing to do. Anyway, guys, I've uh, been going for about an hour and 15 minutes here. It's been a pleasure to be with you all. Looks like the music well's got to got to um, bounce out of here. But I'm glad you're liking the podcast, and we will see you again soon. I'll try to give you guys advance notice of when we um, will be doing the next podcast. And until then, I hope you guys do good and will be thinking of ways that you can do things to forge freedom for yourself. And we'll be looking forward to seeing you guys next time. Have a good evening. <laughs>